Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this video. Today I wanted to talk about one shot prompting and why I've kind of moved away from it and I've moved towards a more vibe coding setup. Now, just as an aside from this, I do want to mention that yesterday I did try context engineering. I'm just going to write context engineering like that. And um, I used Colmedin's system and it, it was disappointing. And I can tell you exactly why I found it disappointing. So this was my process here. This was my prompt, everything. So if I go to initial MD, you can see I gave it pretty, like a lot of context, right? And I was really, really expecting quite a lot from this. Now, what it actually did was it did a very small amount of research. It probably scraped three or four pages before creating this system here. Now, in my opinion, for this system to be good, it needs to do much more in-depth research on all of the documentation pages and you could probably very easily prompt that. I think here on number two, all that need, would need to be done would be um, this prompt would need to be changed slightly to say something like, don't only research one page and don't use your own web scraping tool. Instead, scrape many relevant pages from all documentation links mentioned in the um, initial .md file. Now, I think this change would probably improve it significantly. I'll probably test it again, but out of the box, the context engineering system, in my opinion, doesn't work. And it just does a very base thing if you try and do something overly complicated. Now, with reference to that, what I wanna talk about is one-shot prompting and why I stopped doing one-shot prompting. Now you may or may not know, I made this website with a one shot prompt and it is just really nice. It's really good. It took like one iteration. There was no context engineering whatsoever. It was just a very simple prompt. And then as well, someone with zero experience then kind of took my methodology on, on vibe coding instead and made what you can see here. Now there's a very clear difference. Now, obviously Rowan who made this is a designer, but still, he was managed to, he managed to vibe code this by just telling it exactly what it wanted what he wanted kind of what animation to make and the fact that it's built on html css and javascript means that it's extremely easy to build features this on the other hand was built on next.js just for reference now if you are interested in seo grove feel free to join the waiting list you can just press join waitlist here seo grove.ai we're giving the first three months for 99 dollars for our founding members which will then go up to 499 a month now this tool is fully working right now. We're just working on a few things to make it absolutely perfect. But yeah, this was vibe coded. This on the other hand was one shot prompt. Now what I've found over time is that vibe coding is actually the superior methodology, particularly if you're not a massive coder, you don't know everything that's going on, etc, etc. But I would make some changes to vibe coding, right? And these are going to be my tips for vibe coding. Now, number one is don't one shot. Build features one at a time. And I mean one at a time. Don't be like, oh, change this, but also change this completely other irrelevant thing. Claude Code just doesn't handle this very well. This guide, by the way, I'm talking about Claude Code generally. I'm not really talking about anything else because I exclusively, right now anyway, I use Claude Code. I very occasionally use Gemini when Claude Code is giving me SAS, but otherwise I just stick to Claude Code. So no, my number one vibe coding tip would be don't one shot things, build features one at a time, right? Number two is have some idea of how you want to build. You can build a skeleton in one prompt. So what I mean by this is if I, if I go on the school community here and I go on uh, Claude code, medium code, building an app, then I kind of go through what I mean by this. What I basically mean is like have an idea for how you want to build out everything, right? The more detail, the better. But having experience of these technologies is extremely useful. So a couple of examples, HTML, uh, sorry, Redis for caching, use the up tash MCP. Langchain for AI agents works really, really well. And then for database, something like MySQL, you can use Superbase as well if you want. I'm kind of leaning towards MySQL because I kind of like it when all of the code is in one place. 
and then I have a bit more detail here. So this is super important. Having some idea of the technologies that you want to use is very, very good. You can join the school community, by the way, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. It'll be the first link in the description of this video. Feel free to check it out. And what I mean by building a skeleton in one prompt is like you can give, for example, this kind of prompt here. I want you to build around the following stack, do in-depth research using the Bright Data MCP or just use your internal web search tool. Find out a complete implementation, create an implementation.md file. I mean, this is what I would call vibe coding. Apparently this is now context engineering, but if you weren't doing this anyway, I mean, this is from three weeks ago, this content. So like, I don't know. Um, Redis for caching, MySQL, blah, 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 open router. Create me a simple system with a front end, blah, blah, blah. From admin, I should be able to generate access keys. And for a user login, it should be an access code to login. Start me a new GitHub repo and then launch onto a dev instance on DigitalOcean. Make sure that everything is on Docker, right? So this setup where you have inside Claude code, you have um, the GitHub CLI, the DigitalOcean MCP, and the Docker CLI, right? This is all you actually really need to develop apps because you have GitHub for version control, you have Docker for local um, dev, and then easily pushing it to DigitalOcean. And also Docker's really, really good for allowing Claude Code to run its own code, to see the results. You don't have to worry about VM and things like that. So I do highly recommend this stack as well. What I would really recommend here is telling Claude code to um, scrape many relevant pages of a documentation and store that inside the implementation DIMD. I've been doing this for ages, okay? But one really good thing is giving it, you know, the link to the documentation saying read all relevant pages, not just one page scrape as many relevant pages as possible. Another good tip is look for sites with LLM.txt. So if you go to like, I think Gina LLM.txt is probably a thing. Okay, so not Gina, they used to have one. Uh, let's do Anthropic LLM text, right? So you can see here, this is an example of an LLM.txt, which basically you can give all of these to an AI and it could build you an entire agentic system with tool calls and everything, MCPs, blah, 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 right? This is everything it actually needs to create everything that you need. But the key thing, right, is that ensure to tell the AI to put, put real code samples, real correct code samples from the documentation. Now, I've been doing this for ages, right? I wouldn't call this context engineering. I, anything that, with the word engineering in, in my opinion, is pretty wanky because, like, calling yourself an engineer, I don't know. It, I don't feel like an engineer. I'm going to be real honest. I feel like a programmer, maybe, as in a programmer who can put things together and knows how to put things together, but I can't code, right? And I'm definitely not a fucking engineer. Like I did history at university, I'm not an engineer. But yeah, I moved away from one shot prompting just because if you're really building like an MVP, it's gonna actually take you longer to write a prompt that will one shot everything than it would to just vibe code over one or two days, right? So some creating the perfect prompt could take you 12, 15, 30, 50 iterations, right? Whereas vibe coding, it'll just take you one or two days and you're done. I'm going to leave the video there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content.